2019 general elections have come and gone, but the outcome will remain with us for a very long time. Government spent trillions of naira for a general election, upon which some observers say failed to deliver on a free, fair and credible process. Businesses and social activities were grounded, the army deployed, tension everywhere, the streets were deserted, the economy lost billions of dollars. Meanwhile, tech oracles like Chris Waji are saying that Nigeria could have avoided all this by calling on technology. If you can do money transfer from an equipment, call it here, or call mobile phone, or whatever, there's no way you cannot transfer data. Let's see it as data, don't see it as vote. But way to go. The electoral umpire did have some e-voting pretensions at the outset, which was not taken seriously. Assess the operational, technical and social issues associated with an e-voting system in Nigeria. Today we are out in the street to ask Nigeria certain questions. We want to know how technology is facilitating the electoral process, the smart card readers, the transmission of results and every other tech aspect of the election. It's actually very good and because very coordinated. yes, the card reader uh, was able to recognize our, our, our card and accredit us. Something I see, this is normal and peaceful. It's only that the LX didn't start in fact. Great, but there was no shortage of complaints like this one at a polling unit in Ekeja, Lagos. The place where you place in front do registration. Then you carry the BBS card there. Then you place in front of collection board. So people, like you also people, you know, you don't know where the local government is. Adopting electronic voting in Nigeria goes to the heart of what kind of country we want to become. Make reforms and set an example for e-voting, or watch countries like Rwanda set the pace. Serious doubts remain about the card reader and the process of collating the results. I would still say there's still a major challenge and that has to do with having a central database where all these different um, systems are collated. It exists but there's a basic problem. How interconnected are they? And what is that problem? Internet. Polling unit has a smart card reader where you can actually input results of your polling units when you're done. Automatically, it's supposed to collate at the central database. 
So we don't even have to wait for days. You should be able to get your results instantly. But there's a problem. In one remote village in Bayelsa, that is at the River Rand area, they don't have internet. So even if the guy puts it on it, it has only saved in that smart calendar. It hasn't been published to the online server. Meanwhile, a growing proportion of Nigerians are calling for electronic voting. When we can actually automate our electioneering system so that people can vote online, we don't have to go and queue in some places and whatever. Can data be transferred from the polling booth to a repository of a server? The answer is categorically 100% yes. All around me, the whole place is absolutely deserted. You can't find anybody on the street except people running essential services and things like that. This is the situation in Nigeria where all parts of the country or major act business activities will have to be shut down because the country is conducting an election. We must come to see that no innovative step is too small in our desire to improve the quality of the electoral process. But then, how do we improve our infrastructure to support e-voting. Anything technology, let me do like this it all resides or all, all lies on internet. Till we solve these internet issues, we can't get it perfect. In a country like Nigeria where people are willing to go to great lengths to tamper with the results of elections, possibly because of the lucrative nature of political office, it becomes essential that electronic voting is given a chance. True talk to you, Network. We're extraordinary because we're resilient. We're superheroes because we're problem solvers. We've been innovating for 73 years. We're so addicted to innovating, we gave Nigeria a first and only of its kind, a lot. We're Wemma Bank. We can't stop and won't stop. Are you game? Make magic with us at Hackerholics. To participate, visit wemmerbank.com forward slash Hackerholics today. Hackerholics. Expect the extraordinary. According to figures from the National Bureau of Statistics, ICTs now contribute over 10% to Nigeria's gross domestic product. The figure is a pointer to the fact that ICT has entered all sectors of the Nigerian economy, including oil and gas. Technology we provide, we use, and we begin to do more research on how to raise our standards, then we would get some of it. Imagine when the, the international is coming and they don't have to take up the job themselves but give out the jobs to vendors. You know, they pick you as a, a vendor, you, you put their work out there, they pick a technical partner who ensures that whatever damage that comes or whatever error that comes in while you're using the equipment or service or the product can be handled by the technical. Then there is a transfer of knowledge between the multinational and the Nigerian company. But the influx of foreign IT companies and solutions into the Nigerian ecosystem, particularly the oil and gas sector, is causing headaches for industry players. Key players are now calling on government to enforce the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry Content Development Act 2010, which will ensure that priorities are given to local IT companies in the oil and gas sector. The whole idea is that equipping the people in the ICT industry to be able to get jobs in oil and gas. We will distill, we will refine, we will edit to make those people who play in the ICT sector to have more money to be able to rein, um, um, retain more, more, more foreign exchange in the country and develop better capacity. Government must have a clear local content policy. And those policies must be respected uh, by, by companies operating in the country. Those, co those, those policies must be implemented. And there must be some kind of incentive towards companies in utilizing local content. No, let me tell you the truth. The fintech ecosystem will continue to be in the state of UU in this country until we have companies like Interswitch Systems, XPFS, Simbac Technologies, and the likes able to acquire companies like Flutterwave, Paystack. Because that should be the exit. Then it becomes local. And then the form and the wealth is absolutely local.
told you you look like Whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Are you related to his family or something? I told her. Uh, hey, Dan, checking your Instagram or your Twitter and do or your Facebook and do, it's not the same as coming out to meet people. Is that Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, which? What, all of WhatsApp? them. You're all of them? Yeah. Any brand. Any brand? Uh, yeah. Ooh, come back at me. <laughs> of course. I have a brand. Uh, I've been chilling out with some cool folks. They've been giving me lots of ideas how they want to really latch onto social media to really do their stuff, run their hustle as it were, and make sure that they are, they are making lots of money as it were. So I'm going to be still rather be speaking with lots of them, going to be sharing from them, going to be engaging them, and I'm going to be giving you lots of content, the kind of content that you like, so you'll love it. Thank you very much for your time. Keep watching Digivision Network. Tell me what they use social media for in their everyday life. So, like an interface between me and some of my customers, the ones I don't even know, the ones I don't even get to see. Like, about last week, I still got somebody from Enugu. Wow. So, I've never seen her. Mm -hmm. I just know her name and every other, and every other stuff based on, based on the work, but I've never ever seen her. Even if she's, even, even if she's here right now, I don't even know her. Mm. So that's, that's basically what social media has been able to do for me. Put money in your pocket. I swear down. Ah, you, you look like whiskey as you talk <laughs> like that. Now we say, you get your face, now we say. A picture of um, Lagos traffic and I posted it on Instagram and someone commented, I was like, oh, get ready for my wedding. I'm like, wow, I just stand tight there and say that. Be what are you doing here? I am here to meet people, to learn, and also to further my career in areas that are trending. Now, social media eats up internet data. Fortunately, I ran into some government folks talking about the state of internet services in Nigeria. And I had a question for one of them. So, why is the Nigeria Communications Commission in Social Media Week 2019? Uh, first and foremost, we at NCC were facilitators of technology permission in any, in any form and capacity. This platform to sensitize everybody to know that we are even more desirous in getting broadband uh, ubiquitous in our country. Keep watching DG Vision Network. Your social media pages is like a website, especially if you're in that line of work of um, media-based entertainment, musicians. Yeah. How do you intend to make Lagos part of the future? Because the future is here. The economy we have today is digital. You know, we don't have the manner of economy as we used to have it. From agriculture to health to environment, which is now green, it would be a great undoing for Lagos not to become a digital city. And then we go back to say we have to buy new buses. Uh, we have to go and enumer enumerate uh, Lagos. Then you have another silo of data. Identity management, I fully agree. I tend fully, fully agree. You know, the challenge we have with the federal is getting information. You know. So, for example, the identity cards, the national ID card, has been on for like, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, they are about. And is to actually get information. But we couldn't get that. And we're waiting, waiting, waiting. So that's why I said, look, let's take our destiny in our hands. And we, but if we can get that, well, we don't have to spend the money. We're extraordinary because we're resilient. We're superheroes because we're problem solvers. We've been innovating for 73 years. We're so addicted to innovating, we gave Nigeria a first and only of its kind, a lot. We're Wemma Bank. We can't stop and won't stop. Are you game? Make magic with us at Hackaholics. To participate, visit wemmerbank.com forward slash Hackaholics today. Hackaholics, expect the extraordinary. Is Africa's Digital Hall of Famer. Africa's only two times UNECA Awards winner. 
over a decade and a half experience reporting and advocating RCT development in Africa. Bayero Agabi has traversed the world like no other broadcast journalist. Catch up with him on DGVation Network, Africa's leading enterprise and innovation show on television. Don't miss it. If you are a Nigerian or an African, this brand needs no introduction. In its heydays, the brand dominated the mobile phone space and built a reputation of durability, efficiency, and reliability. But the coming of smartphones dislodged the company from her esteemed position, and today, complaints like this are threatening to end the little remaining trust Nigerians have in Nokia. Nokia has reduced its, they have reduced their standard. How? Reduced their standard? Yes. When they actually have a partner with Microsoft, they have actually reduced their standard. Maybe in the name of trying to, in the name of, and I'm speaking from a point of, I, what I mean, informed knowledge. In the point, of, in the name of, I want to sell to developing nations. They are now selling us costlier, even they are so costlier and inferior products. The, the issue is that people find it difficult to operate. Nokia. And I feel they should do, they need to improve, they need to move with the trend. The pains, disappointments and regrets expressed by Nigerians over the product of their one-time sweetheart, Nokia, prompted me to find out if this kind of assertions are true or otherwise. I arranged to see the man supervising Nokia's work in West, East and Central Africa. I put some questions and he did the expected. He tried to sell Nokia to me. The evolution started from feature phones to smartphones. What happened? What happened to the Nokia we used to know? That's the point. Okay, so let me start by saying that if anything happened, it is that HMD Global, where you are today, the home of Nokia phones, took a deeper look into the market to understand what we can do to deliver better experiences to our consumers. When it comes to smartphones, Nokia does not really fall I see, they don't really rate high on their priority. Um, I don't want to call names, I don't want to go into much detail, but I want you to tell me, what, to, what are you doing to solve that? Because we know that you're not at the top. The IDC data, which was published in Q3 of last year, mm -hmm. and that data indicated that Nokia Mobile is still the global leader on feature phones, as we speak. Feature phones, not smartphones? Yes. So even in the smartphone space, right, in Nigeria specifically, that same data point suggests that the Nokia mobile uh, smartphones running on other operating system are number three. But I had to cross-check the information he was reeling out. The facts I dug up from a Euro Monitor report of 2018 shows that transition brands again have over 75% of the Nigerian smartphone market in its kitty and Nokia is not even a contender. But let's hear more of what the company is saying. I bought this phone and after about two months or there about, I want to change that. They're telling me the parts are not available in Nigeria. Have you expressed that kind of complaint and what are you doing to solve that? So I think maybe the case you referenced is probably uh, uh, a case that is isolated. Yeah, get customer care for them. If you have phone spoil, they can go to the office. They will sit down for you once. Nobody not care what they say, now you will pay and get. All Nokia mobile devices are known for that Nokia heritage of quality, durability, reliability, ease of use. Now, when the Nokia phone enter into a phone, add the contact with liquid, what are I mean? Believe you me, you have to go to a technician or else, you know, the phone will cost points. Nokia has been manufactured in Finland, in uh, uh, Denmark, and so on and so forth, but now India and China. They so, Nokia phones. yes, that produce. Go and check every phone Nokia that you find, especially the latest Nokia. You, you see, made in China or made in India. So, the standard has been reduced. Check like that. That is good. You don't see Nokia. You don't see Nokia and Android. Like, 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 like
if you've seen our two videos, they use Nokia Android. That one is smart Android that they use now. But in the, I'm not going to ask now, say, why is it like that? Most product is this. I'm not going to be this. But in China. But in China, China not care. So look at that, they don't get the China one for inside team. China will they manage for them. Ah, uh, China will they manage for everything. I'm not going to give them a safe level. If you, if you want to buy Nokia, Nokia has six parts. You go to the year, 80,000. <laughs> 70,000. These are some of the challenges everyday users of Nokia phones face, but the CEOs would always say something different. Almost everybody has a very positive story to tell about Nokia. their experience with Nokia devices. Having been at the mercy of foreign phone producers who say they offer all kinds of services, a closer look shows those information are not exactly accurate. Nigerians now have a choice between sticking with a brand still basking in the euphoria of past glories or get the best that smartphones have to offer. So the accusations or allegations and denial and proportions continue but only time will tell whether the company is right or Nigerians are correct. The bottom line indeed will determine how things will pan out. From Lagos, Nigeria, Chooks Otuya, Digivation Network. Tell us how much technology has actually came in the hearing, um, should I say hearing center or hearing industry. I would say that if you look at our field, uh, it's fully techn everything is technology. Right from appointment to treatment, mm. it's technology. Okay. Uh, now, even to see a doctor, it's just a matter of um, going online or their website mm. and then book an appointment, fill a case history, and then send it to the doctor. Mm, okay. So by the time you get to the clinic, uh, the doctor has all the information about you. From the first treatment, uh, normally when we see patients, we have to observe, look inside the ear, uh, assess the ear to see if the person has a hearing problem or not. All of it also involves technology. Mm. Uh, for now, you don't need to uh, take an otoscope and then autoscope is that, that small pen like okay, when you look inside it. Yeah. Okay. And everything is video based. So video that based. yeah, so that you just place a video camera right at the tip of the like camera. Like a camera as in a yeah. camera. Yeah. Talking yeah. about all of these technologies, let me ask you a question. There's been issues of um, I've been hearing, let me put it that way, that people should not use the um, same earpiece. You know, a lot of people now wear earpiece for, should I say, earphone or hearing aid to assist us in doing our jobs, especially the journalists, reporters must listen to whatever they've gone to cover to get that done. Does it have any health implication? Yeah, I, I want to set this straight. You mentioned about hearing aids. Yes. For hearing aids are prescribed for people, people with hearing, hearing problem. problems. Okay. Right? Okay. And then we have what we call hearing amplifiers. There are two things. We have hearing aids and, and then hearing amplifiers. Okay. The difference is that the amplifier just makes sounds louder. Mm. But the hearing uh, aids yes. are medical devices that yeah. are prescribed for people, people. with hearing hearing issues, issues. Oh, so okay. they are programmed and it makes sounds louder and clearer but the hearing amplifiers are can be used by people with some diminished hearing or people with very good hearing who wants to uh, have their hearing enhanced then you go in for the hearing uh, uh, amplifier oh. but uh, with these amplifiers that uh, are in our market, that is where we should be take caution. Or well, let me talk about the, the earphones that we, we use. That we use yeah. yes. Because there has been a research that that shows that uh, a lot of young people are, are having the type of hearing loss we call noise-induced hearing loss as a result of uh, 
uh, these earpiece they use okay. because uh, normally they listen to very loud music and this uh, affects our hearing and we advise that uh, we are not against the use of the earpiece it has to be because it's technology mm -hmm. right uh, you enjoy music use it but always reduce uh, the, 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 the volume. volume. Okay, what the about the one we talked about that you can share the earpiece with another person? Does it have any health implication? Yes, it does. It How does. Uh, the reason why you should not share ear uh, piece is that it's because of infection. If I have a hearing, uh, sorry, an ear infection, okay. uh, you have no idea. So if you use uh, the earpiece that is not sanitized, that is not sterilized, and then uh, I have an ear infection, and then you use it, it can be contagious. Yeah, the, some of the uh, uh, ear diseases, right, uh, are contagious. That is the show for the week. If you have any comment or suggestions, please send them to bayeroagabi at gmail.com or better still, follow the handles on the screen. Until then, I remain yours sincerely. Bayero Agabi. <laughs>